Hello everyone, it's Leo and I'm here wearing green today because we're here to talk about episode 40 from Star Twinkle Precure. Our green girl finally awakened her twinkle imagination and what a beautiful episode this one was. I feel like Star Twinkle is really going down with a blast. You know, this last stretch of the season is bringing it every single episode so far. I'm loving it and this episode was very emotional. And I feel like it touched in some pretty nice ideas and concepts of prejudice and how it can affect the way you see other people. And well, we're talking about this because Lala's an alien and we, Earthlings, we have lots of concepts of what an alien is and what an alien does. And I feel like it all played in this episode and it created the tension that this episode needed. So the episode started with a pretty nice scene with Lala, you know, just getting ready for school with a nice background music. I think that the BGM in this episode was super. Uh, it started with a nice song and then when the episode progressed, we had lots of tense songs. There were lots of silent moments in this episode as well. And, you know, I feel like it was beautifully crafted. Overall, it was beautifully crafted. It was beautifully created. To create, I think that it, this one was probably my favorite Lala episode so far, I think. Well, anyways, we now know that Madoka's father is onto something. He is suspecting of Lala. And I think that one of the things that, was, that were very interesting in his scene was like when he got to the rocket, was the fact that the girls, they weren't really um, convincing at all. And they were very afraid and scared of him. But Uni was the one that really stood out in that scene. She was fierce. She didn't back down. She doesn't back down for no one. And that's one of the things I love about her. She was not afraid of him at all. She was just sitting there on the top of the rocket and she said, well, but he didn't find anything, right? And then we discovered that um, the radars that the humans were using to try to find alien activity on Earth were hijacked by a ring from the Rainbow Planet. I think that that was an interesting thing. Even though magical girls in general, you know, magical girls for children in general, they tend to ignore that part. You know, no one discovers the girls are magical girls. They don't see the action happening in the city, even though there are big explosions and everything. And I feel like Star Twinkle actually uh, gave an explanation for at least the raiders of the humans um, not to catch up on what was going on. So, um, after that, you know, the episode progressed with Lala in school. You, we can see, like, we know that she's pretty integrated at school and people love her there. Um, her friends are all lots, like, the, lots of people, like, really like Lala and they have a very good relationship with her. And so, like, we see this good relationship in one scene and then Madoka's father goes there and he turns everyone against Lala and we see the difference in the next scene. So I feel like the background music and the whole um, camera angles and everything, they worked very well to show us that. Uh, in the first scene, everything was happy, the characters were happy, and then in the next one, the, the music changed, the expressions changed, and the way the camera worked also changed. Because um, at that time, we see lots of lonely shots of Lala going around the school, going around empty halls. This played a big part in what really was going down inside her. She was feeling lonely and she didn't understand what happened. And then when Hikaru was alone with the classmates, they started explaining it to her. And I feel like this is another thing that Star Twinkle did that was out of the box because we had like a rundown of some of the characters that were already attacked in past episodes by Capard and other aliens. I think they were all attacked by Capard. Uh, and they remembered that. And they knew something wasn't really right. And they were actually connecting that with Lala's existence because it all started after Lala uh, arrived on Earth and started going to school. And they're not wrong. They're not wrong, you know, the aliens have been attacking because Lala's there, 
and because of the Star Twinkle story and everything. But, you know, in general, they're not wrong. Their idea isn't wrong. And then uh, another thing was that they said that they, they've been forgetting what really happened. And that's one of the things aliens do. They abduct people and they experiment on people and then they erase their memory. And so, like, this is a concept. This is a kind of like a prejudice people have on Earth. We Earthlings have about aliens. This is a pre-concept we have about aliens. Now, Lala does not fit this mold in any way, but she was affected by this idea. And so I feel like this is a parallel to prejudice in the whole world. You know, people that are prejudiced, people that suffer from prejudice, they have, like, there is this big concept about them, most times a misconcept about them, and even though they don't fit this misconcept, it will, uh, people will try to make them fit on this and people are going to be afraid of them. People are going to hate on them, no matter what and who they are. You know, like being a minority, you have to break from the mold to actually be seen and be understood and be loved by people. And so Lala didn't fit this idea, this concept of what an alien does, but she, she still suffered the prejudice because of that. You know, people loved her, she was integrated at school, but after that, she simply, that they simply forgot everything about her because of the concept aliens uh, suffer from, from Earthlings. And people started seeing her as this big threat to everyone. And so Lala, she overheard it and she was very sad. And so, uh, she felt that, and it's an interesting, it's another interesting take, she felt that she tried to understand Earthlings, she tried to, um, you know, be one of them, and she tried to be like one of them, but that didn't stop people from actually having prejudice against her. And she was feeling very sad because of that, and you know that we had that beautiful scene at the library with Hikaru hugging her, and I feel like Hikaru, she, she does understand her, but th th there isn't like much Hikaru can do in terms of how people are seeing her, because, you know, Hikaru tried to talk some sense into the people at school, but ultimately, like, there isn't much Hikaru can do. I feel like she could have made some sort of a stronger speech, but that's just not who Hikaru is, and so, I feel like she is too immature to know how to do that. And so um, when Kapart attacked, the girls uh, were very scared. And here is one thing I didn't really understand about this episode, even though I do understand now, like I do understand it was needed to create um, a solution. But like when Kapart attacked, uh, the girls saw him attacking from afar. And like they could have transformed before going into action and so they wouldn't um, show their real identity to everyone. It would have been easier that way, but no. Like they had to go there after Capard was, uh, after Capard satiated everyone and then they appeared there and then, you know, all of the girls started coming, Madoka came and then Fuwa took, um, Uni and Elena, and then they all transformed in front of everyone. And so, one thing I found really strange at in that scene specifically was the fact that Uni didn't say anything. Like, I know she doesn't really care, but I feel like she would at least find it strange that the girls were trying to transform in front of everybody else. And, you know, Elena and Madoka as well they didn't hesitate. You know, Elena asked, like, are we really doing this? But then, like, they all, I think it was Elena or Madoka, I don't remember. They did it for Lala because that was needed so that Lala could have her moment with her friends at school. So the girls transformed in front of everyone. So now their identity isn't a secret anymore. And I feel like sometimes when Rikyu does it, they do it in a big way, in a very important and tense episode. And this wasn't the case this time. Uh, it, it was an important, it was a key moment for, um, for Lala at that scene, for sure. But you know, like, it wasn't a, a dangerous moment. But anyways, the girls started fighting. It was, and we had some interesting moments. Elena girl, Kurosaleo kicking that fireball. Come on, that, that's late. That's late my heart. 
Come on, I loved it. And, you know, at the end of the day, that scene was important just because Lala needed to protect um, everyone. And you know, Madoka's father was watching it. She, he was, you know, like, trying to see everything. And I don't think he catched the transformation moment, but then he was the one that was transformed, like, they used his twisted imagination. Kapart used his twisted imagination to transform into the weapon. And I feel like that scene was really beautiful because the the way Lala wanted to protect everyone because they accepted her uh, was very interesting. And, you know, people were cheering on her. And one of the things that was like, I think that the most interesting part about the whole scene was the fact that Lala... Like he, uh, Kapart said, you're not going to be understood by those people. And she said, I don't care. It doesn't matter that I'm not understood. What matters is that we have a good relationship, is that we built something interesting, even though we don't fully understand each other. And, you know, like the people of the school, they don't really know what being a Samanyan is, and they don't really understand what Lala being um, an alien means. Now, but I feel like they realize that they know Lala, they know who she is, and they know her personality, they know her intentions. And so the prejudice they had before, like now they're realizing that that idea they had isn't worth it. It's, it they, that's, that's not related to who Lala is. And so they opened up, they started to understand that who Lala is, is what really matters. And so their prejudice is broken and Lala, because of that, Lala was able to awaken her twinkle imagination. In the beautiful scene, her costume is, oh my God, I really love her dress up. You know, her power up is beautiful. And it's nice seeing it like this because we barely see this power up in a clear view like this. And this is awesome. And so like, I feel like, uh, after a, uh, the the last scene of the episode was basically just to say to Madoka's father that Lala isn't isn't an alien, and so all of the people from school started defending Lala and started, you know, they stood by her side at that moment, and that was intense for me. You know, it was cute as hell. You know, and even Madoka jumped in to defend her, and I feel like that has some sort of uh, heaviness. For Madoka's father, you know, like it's like an, an an opinion he's going to take into heart, probably. I don't know, but you know, it's Madoka we're talking about. In the next episode, we're going to have a Madoka episode, and I'm very excited for that. And uh, at the end of the episode, you know, the all the people at school, you know, touching Lala's, um, I don't even know what antennas. It was so nice, and it feels like. Uh, a culture integration and they're really getting to know who Lala is and I, I, I'm curious to see if things are going to get like if they're going to be more interested in where Lala comes from and to know more about that and well people people can't know aliens exist but they know aliens exist and they know the precurs existence now so is that going to be a big thing from now on is that going to reflect into something from now on i have no idea but i'm very curious to see that anyways guys that was my view on episode 14 episode 14 episode 40 and so please leave a comment with yours let's keep our talk in the comment box below thank you so much for watching and until next time bye bye